Okay, so it is 3, 4, 16. We didn't get to talk about this much yesterday. We'll talk about it a lot more um, on Monday when we start to get into what's called the work and kinetic energy theorem. And I did realize when I went back through my own notes, there were two slides reversed. I knew those seemed like they were in the wrong order. So that whole derivation of work and kinetic energy we did should have come after we just plain old talked about kinetic energy. That was stupid. Um, sorry about that. So we'll, we'll go back and touch on it again on Monday. But on this first one, we have an object. So here's, here's the thing. You can have an object that's having work done on it by multiple things. And the classic problem, and there's one that you'll have in your homework, and there's one that, you know, I mean, I always have one on the test like this, is somebody pushing something up a ramp. So if you're pushing an object up a ramp, if I give you a box, and I give you a ramp, and I say, push it, um, you're working on the, you're doing work on the box. You're exerting a force over a distance. Oops. There's you working really hard. Um, you are exerting a force on the box. What else is exerting a force on the box? Gravity. What else? Friction. So you can look at that one problem. And you can come up with the work done by gravity, the work done by the person who's pushing, and the work done by friction. And then you can come up with, so if you've got all those forces acting on it, what do we come up with that resolves all those forces into one thing? Net force. Net force. And of course, net work, remember my stupid little joke that, you know, seems even stupider when I think back on it? Ha <laughs> ha. Um, net work is equal to net force times distance. So in a situation like this, now with the rock rolling down a hill, we really only have gravity working on it because we're completely ignoring friction. And, you know, hopefully you're not silly enough to get in the way of a nearly 50 kilogram rock because it will win. Let's, now let's look at um, the first problem on the quiz. So we have a catapult. You're, you're loading a rock. You have this... 50 kilogram, that's a boulder, 43.8 kilogram boulder, rolls down the hill, gravity does 5.3 times 10 to the fourth joules of work on it, how far did it roll? So we have um, force of gravity here, let me move that to the other side, and of course you know from all the work you've done with gravity that that gives us a force of gravity on the x and force of gravity on the y. And we can ignore force of gravity on the y for this. We don't need it. We don't have to do anything with it. We know that this angle, if this is a 30 degree slope, that theta is also going to equal 30. And so f of gx is going to be fg times the sine of 30. Let me draw that theta better. Sine theta, which is going to equal mass gravity sine theta. So that's the portion of the force that's actually doing work on the object. The y portion of the force is not doing any work on the object. And this is where I said it's really helpful to draw the picture and look at the forces and not just trust the whole, oh yeah, it's always cosine, because it's not. And, you know, here's my case in point. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't think of the example yesterday, but I couldn't. Okay, so we know that the work done is equal to the force doing the work times the distance the object travels. And of course, distance is what we're interested in, so we're going to rearrange to solve for that. So work divided by the force doing the working is equal to the distance. And the force that's doing the working is this, mg sine 30. So work divided by mg sine 30 will give us our distance. So we plug everything in. We could, of course, um, if we wanted to, we can do dimensional analysis. I, I think we'll skip it for right now. But remember that joules are kilograms meters squared over seconds squared. We're dividing by kilograms and meters per second squared. So we're getting rid of everything except meters. And lo and behold, that's what we want to end up in. We get a raw answer of negative 246.696363. Meters and that's equal to distance. We could get into all kinds of arguments about the sign and whether the work being done should have also been negative because it's Cartesian negative. Um, 
The distance is also Cartesian negative, and the force is in the direction of Cartesian negative. Um, we're not going to get into that argument right now, because uh, this is not, thankfully, like the 4D problems, where those differences in sign give you differences in magnitude. Question, so the final answer with three sig figs would be 247 meters is how far this thing would roll. So yeah, if you have a 30 degree slope and you have a rock that rolls down a 30 degree slope, um, it's going to go. It's several football fields. Questions on this having seen it? Number two, most people got this one correct. Um, you've, you've put a sibling, if you have one, if not, you can call it your dog. Um, into a crate. You are hoisting them up to the ceiling of some warehouse. I don't know where you come up with this stuff. Um, and we know that they move Oops. 9.50 meters. What we want to know is what, what is the force on the sibling and the crate. Um, work is equal to the force times the distance. Work divided by the distance is equal to the force exerted on them. Um, this is big force, um, 4.60 times 10 to the 4th joules over 9.5 meters gives you the force exerted on them. We get a raw answer of 4842.105, blah, blah, blah. We sig fig it out, it gets three sig figs, because their distance was actually 9.50, so 48. Four zero meters. Some of you went ahead and put it in scientific notation. You can do that. Um, doesn't matter. So this is easy three-part algebra. Um, I won't say that they don't get any harder than that, um, but they're nothing like what you had in chapter four. So they are much simpler than that. Questions, comments, concerns? Um, Monday we will revisit kinetic energy and we'll start talking about the work kinetic energy theorem, which is what we started to derive yesterday accidentally. Oops. Um, any other questions? Okay. You've got time to work. Um, all the four B problems were assigned, and we'll put that up on the board, unless it's already been put on the board. La la! So that's it. I'll turn on the radio.